Thank you, Neila. Uh, welcome every, everyone to this meeting. Um, so if you have participated to the webinar last week, um, so this uh, session will be a, a reminder of the main points and also a focus on the e-pitching sessions. Um, regarding the agenda, Okay, for the agenda, we have the welcome and introduction. For, for information, I'm Céline Law from SNCF. Uh, SNCF is the coordinator of Shield for Crowd project. Uh, we will go to the presentation of the Shield for Crowd project, then the presentation of the three use cases that will be, um, uh, which which are actually the the main uh, use case that we choose uh, in our project with the UG and the members. Then uh, Corvus will present the objectives and organization of the e-pitching uh, sessions. Then we will have an open discussion where we, you can ask any questions. And of course, during the, uh, the whole uh, call, you can uh, ask any questions in the chat. And then we will have a conclusion. So on the next slide, um, so for your information, Shield for Crowd is a project funded by the European Commission under the Horizon Europe uh, Research and Innovation Program. Uh, the goal of Shield for Crowd is to set the baseline for pre-commercial procurement, uh, which focus on the innovation procurement uh, in the European security ecosystem regarding the crowd management. Shield for Crowd connects security practitioners. As I said, we have 10 members and also a group of user observatory group joining us to identify the common vulnerabilities posing risk to the, to the protection of public spaces. And with the Shield for Crowd project, we prioritize different challenges and threats that we will present to you uh, in the following um, presentation. The main challenge that we will choose actually uh, at the end of the open market and consultation at, at the end of the Shield for Crowd project will be uh, chosen actually to launch the future pre-commercial procurement that will be submitted to the European Commission. Uh, today, uh, the Shield for Crowd uh, gathered 10 members. Uh, we have in France, uh, SNCF, uh, the French Railway Company, Maxley, Technical Advisor, Safe Cluster, the French Ministry of Interior. In Spain, we have the French Ministry of Interior of Spain. In the Netherlands, we have Corvus. In Poland, we have the Polish platform, uh, PPHS. In Slovakia, we have ISEM Institute and the Slovakian Ministry of Interior. And in, in it Italy, we have Chisinov. As I said, the 10 members have been joined by a uh, user observatory group, uh, such as the RTP in the Metro of Paris, the UIC, some firefighters, Metro of Lisbon, and also some security forces from Poland and Switzerland. On the next slide, you will see the work plan that we uh, are currently working on during our Shield for Crowd project. Um, I will go quickly on this slide. Actually, uh, there's some uh, work package and some tasks that we conducted since the beginning of the project last year uh, regarding some coordination, project management, dissemination, uh, some training on the share innovation procurement. And also the main point is that we uh, um, set up the EOG, the user observatory group, and also uh, the group of public Bias in order to, to identify the main threats, create some use case, and um, prioritize them uh, to at least uh, at the end find the, the one common use case that will be validated. Um, as I said, the project started in August and will end in July this year, and then we will uh, apply for the pre-commercial procurement uh, project. Um, we are, as I said, we are preparing the, the future commercial procurement. Here you can see that uh, we're in the month of April, so there's many tasks that were uh, conducted before. And the, 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 the milestone that will arrive soon is the open market consultation that will happen on 15th of May. And if you participated in the webinars last week, you, you know that you can participate physically also to the open market consultation by registering uh, in the form. Uh, of course, it will be a hybrid event hybrid event so you can participate online and uh, in uh, on site in Poland in Warsaw um, and in during this open market consultation there will be a presentation of all the use case that we will use and also uh, some workshops to challenge um, the, the the use case the technology uh, the planning the budget etc for the future prevent uh, for the future PCP sorry and um, <coughs> for the 
PCP, um, just for your information, um, we are in the uh, innovation procurement methodology where uh, now we are in the CSA, so it's a coordinated support action. So it's a shield for crowd project. And then we will apply it for the PCP, don't the Shield for Crowd PCP, uh, where you can see in the middle that uh, we're aiming to bring some uh, technology from the TRL 3.4 to uh, TRL 7.8 uh, in order to have a product ready for for the market. Uh, you will see that during phase one, there will be the solution design with a certain number of contractors, then the phase two with the prototype development. And then in phase three, we have at least two uh, contractors will go to the phase three uh, in order to test operationally the solutions. And then you have the PPI, which is the deployment of the, 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 the end product and the innovative solutions. For the PCP benefits, um, there's multiple benefits for the contracting authorities, for the suppliers, for the society. Uh, so first for the contracting authorities, I will go quickly on this, but we improve the, the quality of the efficiency of the public services. Uh, we help to um, have a better quality product with lower price for the public buyers. Um, we reduce, reduce the risk of failure. Uh, we have the right to use some licenses. For the suppliers, actually, it uh, accelerates the time to market um, uh, for innovative product and services. It facilitates the access of new innovative players. And of course, it simulates uh, your company uh, and the company growth and attracts some private investment. And then for the society, uh, we're in the European project. So there's a better use of the taxpayer's money to buy innovative products that will improve the quality and the efficiency of the protection of public spaces. Uh, we help to tackle the environmental and so societal and social challenges through new and innovative practices. And of course, there's some creation of high, high added value jobs in Europe because we're in the European project. We are targeting also some technology in Europe. Um, yeah. I will give the floor to Andre, who will present shortly the three use cases that were prioritized among the consortium and, and the UEG members. Perfect. Thank you, Céline. So I'm André Druet from the SNCF team. And now we'll take a look on the, at the three use cases that were prioritized before uh, having some details and information on the e-pitching sessions. So for the first use case, it's a use case which is related to a coordinated bomb attack linked to a CBRN attack. So we can imagine that we're on the Saturday, it's uh, just after lunch, and we have a major event, which is a soccer match, which is drawing uh, in global 80,000 persons. Uh, so the, the, the event is scheduled to start at 7 p.m. and to start to welcome supporters at 4 p.m. So during the lunch hours, we have some terrorists that uh, placed two suitcases in two different places. The first place is the central station, and the second one is the station which is the closest to the stadium. Uh, then uh, we are approaching the time uh, of welcoming the supporters, so it's uh, 3 p.m. There is uh, uh, more and more people accumulating in the transportation network and also uh, near the stadium. Uh, so uh, at this time, uh, we have a um, uh, first uh, uh, suitcase that is uh, spotted in the central station. So because it's really uh, simil looks similar to an explosive engine because there are different lights, different uh, uh, in appearance, it really looks like an explosive engine. And uh, that is why it's leading to panic uh, among the different travelers and also uh, the security uh, agents. So the, the evacuation is uh, uh, rapidly declared in station one, uh, but it's difficult it's difficult to handle because there is a lot of people and there, there is, it's resulting in numerous injuries uh, among the travelers uh, and uh, also some security uh, personnel. Uh, consequently, we have the emergency medical services that are arriving on the place. And at the same time, we have on the second station, which is the closest to the stadium, uh, we have an explosion that is uh, occurring and the different security personnel and police forces that were strategically 
positioned to welcome the supporter on the road to the stadium are uh, rapidly mobilized to take uh, at the same time preventive action within the stadium to make a recognizance uh, of the area and uh, to identify eventual uh, additional suitcases within the stadium and also uh, they are providing assistance to the injured uh, travelers uh, within or near the train station which is closest to the stadium. Uh, we have uh, in front of the stadium the supporters that are accumulating and they hear the explosion uh, which is coming from the, 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 the nearest station. Uh, so it's uh, they are intrigued and uh, it's, uh, it creates a kind of uh, sense of panic among them. Uh, while the access uh, to the stadium is still not permitted, we have drone that is uh, coming to the area and uh, spreading some liquids uh, among the different supporters. So in the escalation of the situation with the nose of the explosion, with the droplets uh, dropped by the drone, each supporters from uh, the different team are blaming each other uh, for the situation and it's resulting in different clashes. Uh, and at the same time, we have also really rapidly the reports uh, from the spectators uh, the, that they are suffering from skin irritation and respiratory distress so that uh, we can uh, already think that of a chemical attack uh, due to the droplets uh, released by the drone. And as the droplets were released, the drone immediately leaves the, the area. Um, we have the reinforcement and efforts that are coming and uh, trying to securize the, the area, uh, setting up a perimeter around the, the station where the explosion occurred. Uh, we have also some additional assistance and uh, reinforcement from the emerg emergency medical services in order to assist the injured people. Uh, the police uh, try to maintain the order uh, near the stadium, but it's, uh, it, it encounters some struggling because uh, they are in limited manpower. Uh, so there are also some uh, measures uh, uh, taken in order to secure the perimeter around the station where the explosion occurred because there are some blasts, some uh, civilians that were hit uh, and uh, we also in parallel have the, the arrival of the bomb disposal uh, team to at the same time uh, make uh, scans on the in the stadium and also uh, to, to to make analysis of the situation uh, where the explosion occurred. Uh, we have the the confirmation of a chemical threat uh, due to the drones droplets, and we have immediately instantly a documentation the contamination protocols that are implemented. Uh, at the entrance of the stadium. So we have uh, some filters that are set up in order to uh, treat and evacuate uh, individuals that are suffering from this uh, chemical attack. The investigations are launched to find the drone and also the, the pilot. Meanwhile, we have the, also the anti-riot that are coming to, to support the police forces in place and to prevent uh, some uh, escalation in the tension and to prevent clashes. Uh, we have at the transportation hubs uh, the work that is continuing to insist, uh, assist the injured person and uh, to, to conduct the different uh, investigation work on the bomb attack. So in the entrance uh, of the stadium, we have some, some tension that is persisting. So that is why we have some arrests of the troublemakers and the coordination of the security person and the police forces and emergency services uh, remains crucial in order to, to safely evacuate the different people and to assist the injured one. We have the public transportation network that is still closed uh, due to, uh, to, the, to the bomb explosion. <clears throat> and uh, even if uh, the different investigations that are conducted, the terrorists that planted the bomb and also the, uh, the, the drone pilots uh, are still not found. 
So it is a complete scenario with a lot of information, a lot of threads that are happening at the same time. And that is why we divided the, the different scenarios, the three scenarios that we will see in five steps that are constituting together the security process uh, where, where the needs and the example of technologies were identified. Uh, moreover, we prioritized uh, the steps uh, to focus the work on uh, on different needs and technologies that we'll need, because we want to make sure that we cover uh, the, the the steps where the most interests were uh, voted. So, with a vote of the project members and the EG members, we have prioritized the three steps: so the detect alert step, the assess follow and the resolve step with the according needs that were especially detailed in the OMC webinars. So for the first uh, step, uh, detect alerts, the real-time event mapping with uh, uh, the possibility to know where are the, the, the police forces, where are the medical services, where are the threat, etc. We have in the second step, the needs especially of a creation of the operational command center that will gather information from the detect alert step and also will allow uh, uh, fluent communication with the different forces to identify the, uh, clearly the, the, the terrorists, the suspicious groups, uh, and also the, like, the, the troublemakers in front of the stadium and uh, all the, the, the friendly uh, forces like police forces, medical services, etc. And finally, on the third step, resolve, uh, we we are focusing here on the communication within the security services, but also with the crowd and uh, the communication on the social media. Uh, we also want to handle the, the recreation of people as uh, safely as possible and neutralize the threat as rapidly as possible. We are talking here about the drone, about the, the suitcases on the two uh, train stations. Here we can find the, the examples of technologies that were extracted from the catalog of uh, solutions, but it's not an exhaustive list of solutions that could be implemented in order to face these different needs. I'll let you through seconds to, 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 to take a look uh, on this information before going to the scenario number two. So, okay, let's move on to the scenario number two. Here it's a use case which is more directed to the disinformation induced panic. Uh, we're here in the kind of the same idea of event, which is gathering 80,000 person. We are at noon, it's uh, Friday. Uh, the event is, uh, so it's a concert. It's scheduled to start at 5 p.m. with a start of welcome of uh, different uh, uh, attendees at 2 p.m. Uh, uh, but uh, we have uh, information across the social media that is spreading about potential bomb threat at this concert event. And also a second information that we have to know is that there is a march, uh, a terrorist march that is going on in the same uh, day in the same city and that will go across uh, this uh, concert uh, hall. And it's uh, scheduled to welcome 6,000 participants at this march. So outside uh, of the stadium, so we have more and more people that are accumulating because it's already 1.30 p.m. and the start of welcoming the support, the supporters is at uh, 2 p.m. So the, the, the concert goers. Uh, and we, we still have no inf official information on the presence of uh, uh, these bombs or not. So that is, what, that is why the, the, the concert goers are going anxious and started to interact uh, aggressively with the security personnel. Uh, and uh, there are all, also some opportunistic, opportunistic troublemakers that are taking the advantage of the chaos to harass to provoke and rob uh, the different concert goers. There are some fights that are sparking and uh, some unauthorized entries that are uh, attempted by the different people. Meanwhile, at the same time, we have uh, on the march, the counter protesters that are blocking their, uh, their way and uh, the tension escalates rapidly, uh, leading to different clashes between the two groups. 
uh, after some some minutes we have a detonation that it, that is occurring so this is not an explosive engine that can uh, injure people but it's more uh, a small smoke device or something like that uh, the and we have instantly some people that are shouting about the gunfire sounds which is causing even more panic among the Wisconsin goers. Uh, we have the tension that is escalating and also some rocks and Molotov cocktails that are thrown uh, from the counter protesters. We have the security and police forces that are working together to restore calm and safety, special anti riot units that, is that are deployed to separate the two conflicting groups. Uh, and at the same time, we have the bomb squads uh, that are called uh, in order to uh, make a, a throw scan across the concert hall to make sure that there are no uh, explosive devices. Uh, we have uh, also a, a panic among the, among the at the same time the the people in March and the the, the concert goers that are in front of the concert hall. Uh, because they hear all this noise, they are, have no information about the presence or not about the bombs. And that, that is why we have some people that are starting to seek refugee, uh, to, to, to flee from, the, from this event. And it's leading to chaos within the street, in the urban areas, and some tables that are overturning, some uh, uh, places that are uh, deteriorated. Uh, and uh, some uh, some vitrines that are broken. We have the anti riot units that are uh, uh, returning the situation to normal. And regarding the bomb squad, uh, they after the analysis, they confirm that the reports of uh, an eventual bombs are unfounded. And uh, instantly, the communication are made. Uh, across the social media and to people which are physically present, uh, that there is no uh, danger and uh, that we can uh, safely uh, go in the consent hall. Uh, after that, uh, the, the, the event is uh, going uh, without any additional uh, danger or any additional uh, event. And uh, the, the event is, uh, is going uh, uh, normally with the sense of relief which is gaining the crowd here again we we have the within the five steps we prioritized four of them with the step uh, assess follow in the first place the first step prevent in the second place the step resolve in the third place and uh, detect alert in the fourth place I will not go in detail here since we already provided all the details within the OMC webinars and also we have all the details within the open uh, market consultation documents. So we'll go directly to the scenario number three, the last one, which is concerning the terrorist attack at the train station and also which is going in the surrounding area. Here, the first uh, information that we have is that it's Friday. We have uh, so it's peak hours, and we have a group of three tourists that are in the major train station in Europe, which is gathering a lot of people, and uh, they are they are uh, they have with them some knives and firearms. Uh, they are coming uh, within the main entrance uh, of a busy train station at this time. Uh, they are just uh, going across the different people, uh, making reconnaissance of the area, strategically position themselves, blending into the crowd uh, and wearing the, their weapon discreetly. So even there, there is a lot of tool of surveillance of people, the different cameras, uh, the different security personnel are not able to detect these suspicious people with their behavior. Uh, and that is why they, they remained uh, they remain unknown. Uh, at the certain moment, we have a train that is arriving on the platform, and there are a lot of people going uh, from this uh, this train. And that is at this moment that the terrorists uh, start to attack and uh, unleash a volley of gunfire uh, with their firearm uh, and also. Uh, trying to, to use their knives uh, to injure people that are within their, their range uh, of reaching. Uh, 
So passenger is instantly trying to seek shelter uh, in this uh, disorder. And uh, we have uh, the security staff that is uh, present here and instantly engaging in a firefight with the terrorist. We have the emergency protocols that are activated and the authorities, the first police forces that are coming to the site are securing the perimeter uh, across the, uh, around the, the train station in order to make sure that uh, uh, the terrorists are filtered and the people are currently evacuated. After a tense uh, firefight with the terrorists, uh, we have two of them that are naturalized, but one is still remaining. And he, uh, th this person blend with the crowd, with the fleeing crowd, and managed to escape outside the train station. But is, he's rapidly spotted by a police officer, and uh, he immediately starts to, to running. Uh, toward the, to, to run towards the, the, the crowd, the people, in order to stab them. And he's instantly shot dead to ensure the safety of the passerby. After that, we have the different medical services that are coming to assist uh, the wounded, the injured one. And the investigations are launched to, 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 to make the uh, historical the history of events and to understand uh, the the course uh, the better understand the course of event and uh, the origin of these three uh, terrorists. Uh, so here, the same work has been done, but as said previously, we will not uh, describe this uh, as it was done within the OMC webinars and also uh, through the OMC documents where you can find all the information. Uh, so we have these five steps with the needed technologies. These three steps that were prioritized were the, the three ones. So the first one, detect alert. The second one, assess follow, with always the operational command center in terms of needs. And the prevent protect uh, step with all the associated needs and technologies. So now that uh, it was detailed with the project presentation the three use cases uh, will not let the word to covers which will detail the different objectives and the organization of the e-pitching sessions beatrice you have the word thank you very much andrea uh, good morning everybody and uh, thank you for joining today this uh, this webinar um, my name is Beatriz gomez i'm a legal uh, procurement consultant at corvus procurement services and uh, yeah, in these minutes, I would like to give you an idea about uh, why we are organizing the pitching sessions, you know, which are the main objectives, and also uh, how you can apply for that and how, and how it works, the process. So if we go to the next slide, thank you. So basically, what are the pitching sessions? You know, where, where are we standing in this project? So as, uh, as my colleagues mentioned before, uh, we are preparing uh, the ground for a future PCP. Uh, and that means that we are still working in the preparatory activities. Uh, if you see this graphic, you have uh, you have on the right uh, side of, this, of the slide, you can see the EAFIP step-by-step -step methodology. So EAFIP uh, is European Assistance for Innovation Procurement. So it's an initiative from the European Commission. And uh, during these uh, years, because it started in 2000, before 2015, actually, uh, we have been working in developing a methodology for innovation procurement. So, as you can see, the, the part that is in color uh, uh, gives an idea of the preparatory steps that you have to perform in order to prepare a PCP. And one of them uh, is engaging with the, with the market and, and knowing what is available in the market in order to prepare uh, this procurement. So basically, what we want to achieve in this case, uh, Andrea already explained, we have been working on defining the use cases, three use cases. We have been also working during the past months in analyzing what is in the market, the state of the art. So if there are uh, mature technologies that can tackle the challenge or not, and uh, uh, to what extent. And basically, what we want here is to complement our research and to validate the, the findings that. Uh, uh, yeah, we 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 had, we got in the in the last months. Of course, we also want to address you personally in order to obtain from you additional information about uh, your solutions, about the the work you are uh, doing, no, uh, the, concerning mature solutions, but also uh, at the research level that can tackle these challenges. 
and uh, of course to also to understand if the market is ready to participate, is ready to address the needs of the of the public buyers uh, of the consortium. Next slide. So how we are uh, organizing these uh, pitching sessions? Well, the idea is that the, the technology providers, the companies, will have the opportunity to present their solutions mm, that can tackle the challenge. So for example, okay, I have this solution, I think this can satisfy your need, or I have the capabilities to satisfy the need in the future, in the in the uh, uh, short term or, or medium term, because yeah, I'm already researching on this or I'm planning to work on this in, in, in the short term. Uh, as you have you have seen here, you seen the slide, uh, we have three uh, pitching challenges. So we sorry, we have three challenges and uh, we have uh, three uh, pitching sessions. So one pitching session per challenge, because it may happen that some of you say, OK, I'm interested in in the coordinated bomb and CBN, uh, CBR and attacks, but I'm not interested in the others or the contrary, or you are interested in all of them or in more than one. So you can sign in for, for uh, the sessions that you that you wish. How you can sign in? Well, there is a, a form, the same form that you use to uh, participate in this event and also to participate in, in if it's the case in the OMC. So if you fill in this form in the, I think it's the third page, you will find uh, find the opportunity to sign uh, sign up for, for the uh, pitching sessions, and then we will receive your application, and uh, we will uh, assign the, the the time slots. So of course we don't we have limited spots because uh, yeah it, it takes some time and 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 uh, as 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 uh, as much as we want to know all the solutions in the market time wise is not uh, possible. So we will. Uh, prioritize uh, well those uh, those applications that come first, but also that are linked to the challenge, of course, no? because there, there has to be some correlation between uh, the activity of the company and the challenges we are trying to address. And uh, basically, um, you will receive after after a sign up, sign, signing up for this. If you have been selected, you will receive a confirmation email and we will also send you a PowerPoint template. So in order to ensure that everybody has the same opportunities, uh, you will have a PowerPoint template with a, a certain information uh, that everybody has to fill in. And of course, uh, a limited time that I will refer in the in the next slide. Thank you. So I think, first of all, it's important for you to understand who will attend your pitch. No, every is open, it's closed, how it works. Well. Uh, we have decided, and, and I think it's the logical no, in this situation, to close the pitching sessions. What that means? That means that not everybody will be able to, to attend your pitching. The competitors won't be, won't be there. So only the members of the Silver Crow Consortium will be there. Uh, how it works? Well, the idea is you will have, as I say, a time slot. You will, uh, will be nice if you can be 10 minutes before in in order to be ready and then when is your time once is your time the person that is managing the rooms will give you access to the room where where the audience is and then you will have your time to to present the, your pitching so don't worry because um, it will be close uh, we are not going to disseminate uh, the information we are not going to record the sessions we are not going to share your presentation and uh, uh, basically, uh, yeah, uh, it will be a closed session. So it's, you can be sure that the information will stay uh, confidential, but we also encourage you not to include, let's say, confidential information or trade secret that you don't want to share because, uh, well, of course, this is used at, at this stage and a pitching. So if we want to, yeah, go to the next slide and uh, what is the format of the sessions? I, I already uh, tell you a little bit about how it's going to work, but basically uh, the pitchings will be online in Microsoft Teams. Uh, we, it will be a, a main room where somebody will receive the people and then another room in which a, yeah, a one provider at a time will, will go and, and present the, the, uh, the PowerPoint. Each participant will have seven minutes, uh, seven minutes to do, first of all, an overview or a presentation of the company, no? who you are, what is your main activity. Uh, then you will have up to three minutes to present 
the existing solutions that you have and you think that can tackle the, the challenge, the, the challenge concerning, of course, the, the, the session uh, that we are attending. And if in if it's your case, if you have a research and development efforts in place, or uh, which are your capabilities to tackle these challenges. And then after that, uh, we will have uh, the consortium members the opportunity to ask you some questions. Uh, and you will you have also the, the chance to answer them uh, in order to ensure you know how it fits uh, your solution to, to certain aspects of the challenge. So basically interact a little bit with you. As I say, uh, it will be great if you can join around 10 minutes before in order to ensure that everything goes smoothly and uh, yeah, for logistic and, and technical uh, uh, issues, because, well, you never know, but uh, we hope everything goes fine. But if not, it's nice to have uh, some time to react. And uh, to optimize the time, uh, please, send, please send out this presentation beforehand. So uh, you are expected to hear from us this week. Uh, if you have been selected, you will receive an email with the template, as I said before, and then uh, you can prepare the presentation and it will be great if we can receive it at least one day before in order, as I say, to ensure that everything goes smoothly and, and we, are, uh, uh, we are good in terms of time as well because it's, uh, it's very tight. And uh, if you have not been selected uh, and uh, we inform you that uh, the slot has been covered and it's not possible, you can still the opportunity you can still have the opportunity and we encourage you to send us your presentation because perhaps you cannot uh, present it to us uh, live but we will definitely check it with interest the presentation and we will take it into account uh, in order to define our challenge and in order to in the future prepare the tender document and here i would like to give you some tips uh, for a pitching uh, first of all uh, of course, it's for granted, but I think it's always good to remember that it's important, especially in these uh, kind of events, to respect the time because uh, yeah, it's very tight, the, the agenda. So we have one provider after the other. So it's nice to stay uh, on time for, for us and, of course, for you. Um, use the PowerPoint template provided so that this is essential because we want to ensure that everybody has the same opportunities and, and can tackle the same points and provide the same information. Um, please link your solutions to the specific challenge. So if, for example, we have in one specific day the challenge, uh, challenge one, and you are pitching for this challenge, try as much as you can to link your solutions to, to the specific, uh, uh, let's say, uh, details of that challenge. No? So the, the people from the consortium can understand how potentially your solution can, can address it. Uh, if you use acronyms, of course, you can do it, but please, uh, before that, uh, let us know what that means, because uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, if you are, no, it happened to all of us, if you are very familiar with something, you take it for granted, but perhaps other people uh, don't know uh, or don't have very clear which is uh, this acronym for. Uh, do not be too technical in the description of the solutions. Of course, we have technical partners, but not all of them are, uh, and uh, not all of them has the specific knowledge to understand technical terms. And as I said before, uh, everything will be closed. Uh, your information is not going to be disseminated, but we encourage you not, not to include in the uh, presentation confidential information at this stage. And I think that was all from my side, and we will be very happy to address any, any question you may have. Uh, so please feel free to, to put it on the chat or just uh, uh, raise your hand and, and ask it. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you for the presentation, Beatrice. So if I will understand, Beatrice, you will uh, send all the information related to the pitching session on this week, right? Exactly, exactly. So we are aiming to uh, to send these emails uh, probably by tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Uh, so you have time to prepare your presentation and, uh, and send it to us uh, if you wish.
So if, if some of you uh, didn't uh, register for the for the pitching and still want to do it, uh, I encourage you to do it uh, yeah, as soon as you can. So we can we can give you a uh, time well in advance no, in order to, to prepare your, your materials. I see another question. You suppose that each pitch will be a complete solution? Well, not necessarily. No, well, not necessarily. So, for example, if you have uh, certain technologies that they are already available, but they don't tackle the whole challenge, but only one part, it will be still interesting for us to know that. Um, and if you still don't have a complete solution, but you are working on it, or you are planning to work on it very soon, that's also interesting. And that can also fit in, in research and development and capability. So we are not looking for an end-to-end -end solution because uh, we know, based on the research, we know that probably there is no end-to-end -end solution that cover all the aspects of, of the use case. But uh, any information concerning available solutions or solutions uh, being developed that can cover it or part of it are, are more than welcome. I don't know, Andre, if you want to, to add something. Yes, to that I, I, can, I can add uh, two information for this uh, question. So the first one is the, uh, if you mean complete solution in terms of TRL, uh, just as a reminder, we discussed this at the OMC webinar. We're searching for solution from TRL three to six. And the second information, if a complete solution is meant to address all the needs. Uh, so if it's uh, as you can, uh, you, you just have to remember that the, the, there were these steps that were prioritized. We will be searching, uh, in fact, the, the in priority uh, solutions that are covering the steps for that are were prioritized in the first place. But it, if it's not uh, covering everything in the security process, if it's not covering all the five steps, it's not a uh, it's not a problem. So there is an additional question. Uh, what do you exactly mean by R&D capabilities in the pitch agenda? Yes, yes, thank you, Andre. And thank you, thank you for your question. Uh, what do you exactly mean? Well, uh, research and development, basically we are thinking about solutions that are still not ready. They are not close to the market. So uh, we, we are referring to solutions that are between a TRL 3 and a TRL 8, so that they still need some research, some work on it in order to be a ready solution. They are not mature enough. So it may happen that uh, within your company, you are a, a working on, on a solution that this is still not ready, so you can still not commercialize it because it's still not mature. But you are working on that and you, you think that you will have a solution soon or you still need to put more effort from the research perspective, but uh, you are working on that basically. Not that. What we want to know is that you have the capabilities in order to, to, to work and to, and to develop a solution that can tackle this, this challenge. Okay, so we have another question. How are you going to select the companies for the pitching? Well, uh, first of all, uh, the, the, we will take into account who, uh, who uh, sign up first, but we are also going to take into account the alignment of the solutions, the alignment of, of the activity of your company with the challenges. But uh, of course, because uh, we have uh, quite uh, uh, some applications and we have limited time slots, so we have to we have to use the criteria that, of course, who sign up first uh, and has a clear relation with the challenge will will have the preference.
Okay. Do, do you have any other question or, or, or issue you would like to raise? Well, then, if not, I, I would like to thank you very much for, for coming to, to this event, and I will give the floor to Andre. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much for uh, for your uh, participation in this uh, meeting on the e-pitching sessions. Uh, thank you also for the participants that make uh, the, this presentation uh, uh, and participated in it. And if you have uh, further questions or any information that you would like to receive, you can use this email contact, uh, which will be uh, directly addressed to the Shield for Crowd members. And we will provide you the, the response or the information that you need as, uh, as soon as possible. And you also can find all the information related to the project, related to the OMC, pitching sessions to, to the registration form to the pitching session on the website of Shield for Crowd. And uh, the same thing, if you cannot find uh, some information or you are struggling with something, do not hesitate to send us a mail within this, uh, uh, this mail. So if there is no more questions, uh, we thank you for your participation. I wish you a nice day and a good preparation for the pitching sessions. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Everyone.